Don't tell me think. Hello guys and welcome to Mary Fulton Fit. And um, we have a special guest tonight. And actually, I don't think this one's going live. Hold on one moment, please. Hang on, hang on. Oh, I was live. No, no, wrong button. Uh-oh, technical difficulties, perfect. Oh, no. Ninja Step is here and we are gonna be talking about Heart Health 101. I am going to be fiddling with my Instagram while she introduces herself and gives you a little bit of information and we will get started. Hi everybody. So we are back with our little hearts on because we're going to continue to talk about heart health. Okay, so you guys now know how the heart works. You can explain how the pump, the boom, boom, and all the pressure from last time. If you missed out, go ahead and watch the last video. I thought it was pretty good. A lot of information. Okay, it's going to start over was, here. Um, we're going to do a restart, rewind, <laughs> and here we go. Happy Hello, guys, Thursday. and happy Thursday. Yay. We are doing heart health for February, and this is our second week with amazing nurse and ninja staff and just a good friend to me. I really, really appreciate you. She has such it. a big heart, <laughs> and she's talking about the heart. She's a pro. So if you guys have questions, you're going to be able to put them up here, and um, go ahead and get started and give us a recap. Okay, Ooh, so we're going to do wolf. heart health part two, okay? So kind of answering those questions from last week and kind of the continuation. So... After our talk last week mm -hmm. about yes. the heart and I had my equipment here and we were, we were checking blood pressures and all that stuff. So I put everything back in my car. Oh my God. And the next day I came to work out my heart with Mary Fulton. Mary Fulton yes. Fit on her channel. Come on, everybody, subscribe. It's, <laughs> it will change your life. It will change your life, I swear. Thanks, so um, I happened to go to the gym afterwards to go see some of our friends and do Body Combat Live. And afterwards, I was on my way to Costco and I saw an accident in which I actually had to respond and do CPR on somebody. And I was actually able to save this person's life because of the equipment that I had, that I knew exactly where it was, and just being able to think quickly. And the man had a heart attack. Wow. So we're going to talk about that because it freaked me out. And I was like, I can't believe this just happened. Like I called her like, oh my God, like, I don't know what this is. It's a sign, you know, but um, I'll tell you the story. So got in my car, pull up. I'm going to turn left into the parking lot, just like you guys, right? Like, oh, it's red light. Okay. Going to turn left. And then I look over and these two cars are like this. And I'm like, well, that's not normal. Like, that's right. not good. And then I saw the people in the other car were out of the car, calling on their phone, looked like it, an emergency had just happened. The other passenger, I looked in his car, and he was not out of his car. He was just eyes completely shut, and it looked like he was unconscious. So I ran over to the side of the car. I tried to open the doors that were locked. The window was cracked just a smidgen. Crazy. And what's crazy is I locked my keys in the car that morning at Mary's house. Yes. So just all the timing of everything was like, everything happened for a reason. Yeah. So I got locked out of my car that morning, but was able to break into this man's car. I got my arm in the window, pulled open the door. Superhero. I checked him to see if he was responsive. This is what you do, right? You guys are like, whoa, whoa, what do you do in emergency? You yell their name. Hey, mister, can you hear me? Wow. You know, like you just get in there, like, just like Mary, like, wow. Like, take notes, guys. You know, like, I don't have any gloves on. I was just rubbing his chest. Hey, can you hear me? You know, not responsive. I saw him gasp, so I knew he was breathing. So I checked for his pulse. And his pulse was, like, very, very faint. So I knew his heart wasn't beating strong the way, you know, I checked Mary's pulse, the way I checked that we were checking our own pulse, okay? So I knew he's, his heart, his something was wrong with the pump. And I knew we didn't have much time. So I opened the window, got in the door. Luckily, another guy ran up and was like, I'm a nurse. I was like, oh my God, we got to get this guy out. That is good, you guys. So, Did you listen to that timing? It was perfect. He saw it. I guess the guy w went unconscious and just drifted across and then lightly tapped. If it would have hit a curb, it would have been the curb, but he hit the other car and that's what stopped him. So it was actually a heart attack that he had, but I didn't know this at the time, right? So I thought he was just in an accident. So I said, well, I could just tell that his heart was going to stop and it was going to stop and we didn't have much time. So we made a quick response. We, so we got to get him out. 
So we asked for help. We gently, it wasn't gracefully, but we oh gently got this guy out of the car. I think I had three people, you know, helping with his head. We got him down. We, I ran to my trunk. I grabbed that emergency kit. We had a shield. I had my goggles. I had my N95. I had my stethoscope, my blood pressure cuff, and we just started uh, CPR wow. on this man. And he, Can you guys give her some hearts right now? Yay. This is not just a, I mean, I really feel like Steph is an angel because she came into my life as an angel and helped my mom and took my mom to get her tests and helped her with her, like all of this heart stuff last week. And then the next day she was put in this other situation and God keeps bringing this angel I to people's a lives. in like two years and I did not expect it to not be at work. So this happens and you have to be able to know what to do or what signs to think of if somebody is in your house like what do we do right like yeah. first thing we do see if they're responsive call 911 that's what was happening i heard some guy on the phone he did a great job so i had my team right i was like okay i have a team we're gonna do this so we started cpr the emergency came and took over and he ended up becoming stable and it showed on his rhythm remember that heart rhythm it was a normal heart rhythm, but he had a large heart attack, which is, you can see it in the ST wave. Wow. So ST elevation showed he had a major heart attack. So we kept his pump moving Man. so that he had more time. Okay, so we're going to talk about some of these things. So yeah, he obviously had some type of heart disease. Okay, so we're going to use these words, but we're going to break them down. So okay. heart so disease. Take notes, you guys. Take notes. This is really good Just stuff. Just basic. Okay, a heart. We're going to talk a little about he had some type of heart disease. Mm, poor guy. So any condition that involves the heart. It's just a heart disease. It could be the vessel. It could be the muscles. Okay. Um, so coronary artery disease is a big word people have heard before. And they call it CAD, coronary artery disease. Coronary okay. Coronary artery That's disease. That's the okay. main cause of a heart attack. Okay. So there's something wrong with the arteries that are feeding the heart. Okay. Coronary arteries. They're in the okay. heart. Okay. Those are the arteries that feed your heart muscle. Okay. So that's the most common disease in the U.S. actually. Okay. Coronary, so coronary artery, artery disease, disease causes heart attacks, and it is the most common disease in the United States. So we've been talking about this, and we don't know much about it, but it's so common. Yeah. So 790,000 people in the U.S. have that. Okay. Suffer a heart attack each year. Does not mean wow. they die, like that, that gentleman. Okay, but... That is a lot of people, you guys. 800,000 people. Can you give us a, a thumbs condition. up or a heart if you or you know somebody who has had a heart attack or stroke or any of these things go on? Give us a thumbs up or a It can or be stress-related. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really could be caused by a lot of different yeah. things. So you guys can relate. You have people in your life that you love, that you care for, or yourself. Um, I know somebody jumped on over here that I know that has had multiple heart attacks and has really cleaned up their life yeah wow. and i have another friend over here on this side that joined in too that um oh her daughter um has a heart condition she has, yes wow. yeah so um this is her heart month for her daughter oh so you know a lot of people can relate to this and it's super important and so please stay tuned and keep listening to these yeah, tips. And share with us because yes. it really helps me we learn every day okay we learn yeah. every day so Roy okay says her dad and um somebody else gives some thumbs up okay okay so a heart attack when the when there, there's a heart attack means that coronary artery gets blocked by okay. something okay so that that blood flow can't get to that tissue to that muscle remember that's the pump okay so if you don't have oxygen going to the pump the pump is going to become weaker okay really really quickly and we talked about that pump and how important that pump is okay so Thanks if you lose you blood supply to that tissue it causes damage very quickly so in the case of this gentleman obviously he didn't have enough oxygen going to those arteries to pump his heart it was still pumping but not sufficiently okay and it caused damage quickly so some symptoms you might have heard of um are chest pain okay. okay chest pain chest pain might be a symptom it could go to the back okay it could go to your neck it could go to your arms and go to your jaw okay it's not just necessarily like oh i have chest pain like in the videos oh. okay so it could be like back really bad back pain or neck pain oh. women get nauseous 
Okay, nausea. Nausea. So you have important things to take. Notes. Jaw. Women especially get oh, the, okay. the jaw pain, shortness of breath. Okay, and nauseous. It's the kind of feeling like a like a, an anxiety attack almost, or okay. indigestion or heartburn. People describe it as. Okay. Okay, so it has all kinds of like different weird symptoms. Not necessarily like oh my heart. Okay. So know that there is different kind of pain. So if you're like, something's not right. Okay, that's just a little risk, a little like ding to you. Like, okay. huh, I don't feel that. right. And you know, Yay. don't just sit on Yay, it. Babe. Okay. So if your heart feels like kind of irregular or rapid, uh, you feel weak, lightheaded. Yes. Okay. Okay. Lightheadedness. Lightheadedness, weakness. Um, some people get a cold sweat. Okay, mm -hmm. so these are some feeling that symptoms. Okay, they're like, okay. ooh, something's going on, you know, like just don't feel right. So those are just some signs that your heart could be working a little bit over time mm, or something. Okay. Might so did you guys be hear that? Wrong. So okay. something might be wrong or your heart's working so a little over time here. I had a patient who was so sweet. She was the cutest woman. Um, she would feel it when she was uh, vacuuming and cleaning. She would oh. get this really like like severe chest and like stomach, like indigestion, feel kind of dizzy and she would sit down and it would kind of subside because her okay. heart would rest. And then she would mm. do it again and... Actually, she was stressed out, too, so she had a lot of family a lot of stuff, stuff okay. going on. Okay. She actually came in, and we sh we could see that she had a heart attack. Oh, wow. And so when the doctors went to investigate, which we'll talk about the different tests that they do, um, it, there was no blockage. So it really wasn't having to do with, like, the stuff we were talking about, the clots and, mm -hmm. like, not the air getting through. It was actually like mostly stress related. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you can stress. even get heart attacks from like thinking about stuff really hard and stressing out. And then you, she felt those symptoms for like a couple days or a week. Okay. You know, and she would just stop and sit down. But if you start to feel those symptoms repeatedly, okay, it's a sign to you that something is not right. If that's not normal. Go see a doctor. For you. Yeah, yeah. Just go, you know, before it got to the point where she had a full blown like something is wrong, take me to the hospital. And then we found out later that she had a heart attack. Okay. We got to save that tissue, save that muscle. So you got to get treatment as fast as possible. So we're going to talk a little bit about if there was that big moment. First mm -hmm. thing we're going to do is Call 911. Yes, we're going to call 911 <laughs> as fast as Mary, possible. Call, okay? What if you can't call 911? Then you tell somebody else to call 911, right? And then we're going to get the that first emergency aid. services. Like, mm -hmm. So for us, it was the ambulance that come and start that basic treatment. Okay, And the delay causes more damage to the tissue okay. Okay, the I'm, longer we delay. I'm going to pause you for a second. Do you want to answer any of these questions before you move on? There's a few over here. Do you want to go and then we'll come yeah, back we'll to Yeah, we'll just talk about the real quick like. Okay, so, so we see your questions and we are going to come to them. And Bailey, I'm so glad. That's my niece. I'm glad you're here listening to the so live. there's two main things. So like EMS responds, emergency medical system, they respond and they're going to do maybe one or two things. Okay, what did we do when that happened to that guy? So first you, well, first you asked somebody to call 911. Yeah, we and called already 911. Had, yeah. We got EMS, and then what did we start doing on CPR. him? CPR. Yeah, we started CPR on him. Okay. So do you Just guys the need chest a review of CPR? Just I the do. chest. He, he was breathing, but his pulse was really weak. Okay, so we weren't sure his heart was working good enough. You might as well pump the pump for somebody. You can't hurt that. Can you? Are you able to do a little review? Yeah, on CPR? you know. Here, grab the dog. We got the little dog right oh, there. Oh, it's so cute. All right, perfect. So we this got is a hand placement. We got him right here. <laughs> this is this is your strong part. Okay, <laughs> this is the part you want to put first. Okay, so you okay. kind of grab either hand, whatever hand you feel like is stronger. It doesn't matter. I've like, okay. I'm like which one? It doesn't matter. So you would just do your hand placement like this. And this part is going to go right on their chest. Where on the their heart chest. So where where would that be on my chest? Okay, so right about here, like mid-sternum. I mean, mid -sternum. if you get them right in the sternum, you're fine. Right okay. in the middle. Okay, okay. so chest placement notes? here, hands, you know, cross. So I would find this little guy's chest right there, <laughs> and I would put my hands right here, and then you would pump down. But... You would use your body to lean down over them. So right. use that body pressure, okay? Because mm -hmm. you get tired so you really lean, fast. Yes, exactly. A flat surface, 
flat. That's why we pulled him out of the car. And you made, and you also said you made sure his head was okay. Yeah. So they his always head talk was about safe. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't any trauma, so we weren't worried about really his spinal cord at that moment, just his head. So get him down, get him straight, <laughs> and go to town. So she thought I was going to get a real dog. <laughs> like, this is my this dog. This is a little dog, so you're going to pump him him like this, okay? And the second thing that we would do is a defibrillator, okay? If we're at 24-hour fitness and That's we had right. access to one of those defibrillators, have you guys heard about that, like at the mall? Yes, okay, they, that they... might be able, it could be an arrhythmia, an irregular heartbeat. Okay. And it just needs to be zapped back into normal sinus rhythm and the heart restarts. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so if there is an arrhythmia, an irregular heartbeat that just all of a sudden happened with this person, their heart was quivering and that muscle wasn't able to fire correctly, it will tell us, it will detect it, and it will actually perform, the machine will do everything. You don't, okay. you don't do anything. The machine tells us what to do. Continue CPR or... A shock is needed. Okay. Okay. So okay. those are the two main things we do if we think someone is having a heart attack. Okay. We start And then CPR. how many compressions are you supposed to do right now? Because they it change be, all the time. It does change all the time. So we could just stick to the 30. Okay. 30. 30. One and, and then two. If, and if three. there is somebody there. Should I get there, on this dog? Should I get on this dog? <laughs> one and two and three. Am I doing it correctly? Yes. And okay. then if somebody else was there taking over and they had additional <gasps> oxygen, we would... There's no need if you're in an emergency situation. We did not perform uh, breathing on this right. gentleman. Okay. We just kept his heart pumping. Because he was breathing already. He was, but even if he wasn't and you didn't feel safe, okay. you didn't have, like, you know, a, a, a proper mask, uh -huh. mask to mm -hmm. protect you sure. from that person, the oxygen that you're breathing in is isn't as important as the oxygen you're pumping through the body, through the blood okay. to get that oxygen to the tissues, right? Because then you're just providing extra oxygen sure. for the lungs to push that into the blood. But the blood is already full of oxygen as well. Right. Okay. And I'm going to just point out, she said he was breathing already, so he hadn't choked on anything, right? Because... Maybe he's passed out because he was eating and driving and choked, right? You yeah, and then you so, can, that, actually that same maneuver, you would just do it more on the stomach to try to, to see if help, you can like, get someone get something out, right? to cough something up as well. Okay, okay so cool. those are just the emergency, oh my God, what do we do? CPR, you know, EMS, mm -hmm. 911, EMS, CPR, defibrillator, okay? Yeah. And it's pretty simple because we were like, what is that thing for? It's mostly for people that are having a heart attack. To be honest, okay, that's cool. what usually will zap people back in action. Is this, so, is let's this such see. a good refresher course, right? How many of you give me a thumbs up or a heart if you have done any CPR or first aid training in the last year or so? Um, I haven't done it for I think I did it two years ago because we've been what, in COVID for the last mm -hmm. year. So, but you know, it's good for us to go back and do it. You can do it online. Okay, good. Yeah. And, and maybe if you haven't ever done it, it's great. It's a, it's great because you can help, you know, your friends, your family and, and a stranger. Guess what? A stranger is somebody else's loved one. Yeah. And, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. Like, like she said, if you don't feel comfortable breathing or you don't want to hurt them, but being a part of saving somebody's life, what a way to serve and love your neighbor, right? As yourself, because if, Stephanie, like this, these, this person, this family doesn't even know that Stephanie did this, right? But they know that this beautiful angel, I'm not crying now, came to help <laughs> their dad, their grandpa, their uncle, their brother, you know, like that's your family too. So like mm -hmm. thinking about how we can help somebody, she pulled over, she didn't have to do that. She could have gone on with her life, but she put her needs aside and serve somebody else. But I feel like you guys helped me save that man because I had that first aid kit in my car and that's the first mm -hmm. thing I thought of. And when I grabbed it, before we pulled him out of the car, I knew to go grab my equipment and then see who can help me. And then I gave them the equipment. So another girl was like, I know CPR. And so she is the yeah. original one. She I is. gave her the shields. And she's the one that started CPR while I started gearing up. And then I took over for her. So mm -hmm. just some random girl, not the other nurse that showed up. He helped me as well. But she's the one that started CPR while we got ready. Right. And, and it was amazing. And and look how cool the story is, right? Because um, I was thinking, I need to do something for February for heart. And then I looked at Steph and I said, 
you're a nurse. And she's like, I'm a cardiac nurse. And I was like, <laughs> oh, would you mind like doing some stuff for us in the month? And I just feel like that's God ordained because yeah. she put everything in her car because of that. She helped my mom because of that. And she was ready for this man because of that. Mm -hmm. So don't underestimate the little tiny things that we do in life because it could be this huge impact in somebody else's life. Like, yay! I know, I know. she didn't come for kudos, but I just no, it, I, I want to give kudos to you. <laughs> and just because that's a beautiful story and I want to inspire all the rest of you to know that like, you know, God uses us all in different ways. And like, she got to be used and it's such a blessing when you are used and she's just it, it was incredible. I mean, I couldn't believe it, to be honest. Yeah. And Beautiful. I froze too. You always do for a minute. You pause. And it was so funny because when I got back to my car, I guess I only paused literally one second because I froze and was like, oh, but that's it not felt normal. slow motion. <laughs> and when I looked back at my car, my trunk was open because that's where my little kit was. And my window was Hi, down, Jim. and my car was still on, and the music was playing when I got back to my car. I didn't even turn off my car. I put on the hazards and jumped out. It. I thought I turned it off, got out to check the scene. No. I love it. So sometimes your pause could be frozenness. But what I also learned when I was younger in my EMT school is, do you think the percentage You're of touching people... The dog. <laughs> no, no, I was going to ask you a question about CPR. Okay. Oh, about the dog. <laughs> so do you think that if someone you didn't know, but you knew CPR, you would perform CPR on someone that you didn't know over one of your family members? What do you think? Like for me personally? Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like God puts us where we're supposed to be. So if somebody was in need... I would go help them because I feel like I'm supposed to be there. So um, I might have a moment of like, I don't remember how many, you know, I've done CPR. I'm a trainer. I'm a te I was a school teacher. So I had to take that and I have kids and my mom here, but it's super important now that she reminded me it's 30, you know, and like two breaths, 30 and two. 30 yeah. and, two. and so just remembering 30. that and trying to remember where's that number 60, 60 was our magic number for the heart, the heartbeat. So 30, you know, yeah. Pause two seconds, 30, that's your 60. That's your kind of your goal, right? Yeah. So, but, no, I think for me personally, I, I would I would do it because I I would want to help So, somebody. if you saw someone at the gym, she would do it. What if mom, what if something happened to mom here and she just fell? And, like, my guy, where she just wasn't responding to you. Um, I might have a bigger freak out, I think. Exactly. Because it's my mom. Exactly. And there's a lot of emotions in there. You... Most people that know CPR, there's a higher percentage that they will not perform CPR on their loved ones because they freak out. Okay. I could freak out. So you pause and you freeze <laughs> even more. So just yeah. know that. Okay. So the people that you love the most, you're like, oh my God, I would do it in a second. You wouldn't because you freeze. Okay. And that is completely natural. Okay. That's when you grab your phone and do the first step. Okay. Well, we just remember the first steps. That's all we're talking about here because you will freeze and you will freak out and your brain goes a million miles a minute and you want to, but you're scared that you're going to hurt them and you're scared that already hurts. So the first thing you do is just call 911. Call okay? 911 because then at least help is on the way if you forget what to do. They might just need that do. defibrillator. You yeah. know what I mean? It just you might need to just get here as fast as possible. Yeah. Okay. So just remember the steps and do what you can in those situations. Okay. No one's expecting you to do anything more than just, you know, be present and do what you can. Yeah. So just know that that's going to happen and it's more common for you to not right. do it at home or on I your have... own family members because of the like, oh, right. my God, I'm gonna hurt so you're me. only going to do CPR though when their heart has stopped. So if somebody's having a heart attack, you're not doing CPR on them while they're having a heart I attack. I am because their you muscle, are... I'm, this okay. guy was that's still, he, so had, he, was, he had okay. a pulse and he was breathing, but he... His heart was not, the muscle was not sufficient enough to, to pump the way we were talking about that 120 over 80. Okay. So if, by the so, time they got his blood pressure, they already, like, we knew that he had a heart rhythm and a heart beat and it wasn't irregular, so we didn't need to zap him. So they basically got him stable enough to transport. They gave him epinephrine, which makes the heart beat faster. So okay. through drugs, they were able to this mimic to know, the right, actions of the heart. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we didn't have access to IV. You know, we didn't have access to the medications to push. You know, when someone's heart is there, the beat is there, but we're going to lose it. We have a chance of losing it. That's when the machine is telling you to continue CPR. Okay, yeah. 
until it gets a way that it can shock that rhythm if it's a different rhythm. He had a, the same normal size rhythm, so we didn't need to shock him, but his heart, that muscle, wasn't sufficient enough to pump to on pump its own. It. Okay. So sometimes you, yeah, I mean, even if someone's breathing and has a pulse, like in my situation, we still did CPR on him without the breathing part. We basically did chest compressions on Okay, him. so chest compressions, mm -hmm. and if you're scared to do the breathing, then still just do the chest compressions. She said just that's no, the I mean, part. just know that's the pump. You guys, you're, you're being the pump for them. You know, you're pumping that oxygen through their body if you're not sure, okay? You're you're really not going to really hurt somebody that much. If you did that, you're like, yeah, me! <laughs> That's good, right? Yeah, like, they tell you to get off. Yeah, then you're like, like oh, okay, All right, I'm sorry. Oh, bye, 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 sir, bye. Like, you know, <laughs> no harm, no harm. So um, just know that you can do it. You are heroes. You are strong. And, and you have the good Samaritan happen. law behind you. So. Yes. <laughs> so Mary's going to look up some of the questions, okay? And then... I on, am? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to look yeah. at questions. Okay. The question. Let me look over here. So Bailey was really excited about this story. Thanks for joining us, Bay. And um, let me see over here. We just have some comments. Um, it says, um, learning so much from this live. OMG, I thought you were going to grab a real dog. <laughs> well, I haven't done this um, since high school. I definitely need to take the class and a real life angel. Yay. Really good how God used that, um, used you through the story. It is a really well, cool story. It, I honestly think it's because of you guys, too. Oh, well, you know, God used Okay, you so though. we're going to okay. talk about so let me how to right reduce here. There's a lot. and slow the damages. Okay. okay. Here's some questions. Can you catch cat before folks... Have a heart attack. That's arrhythmia. That's a tachycardia. Those are those arrhythmias that we're talking about. Those are a little bit more complicated. And that machine, the the machine that I was telling you about, uh -huh. it would be able to detect a, an arrhythmia. Okay. okay. So we'd have to have a heart machine. That's why we have to call EMS who would attach it to that person to know if there was any irregular heartbeat. That is an irregular heartbeat. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what she would do. Okay. Yeah. And then um, Veronica, thank you for sharing. She said her father died of a heart murmur because CPR was not administered to him on time. Mm -hmm. So see, guys, you know, I'm so sorry. We, um, my dad died of a heart attack, too. He was alone, so mm -hmm. I, he wasn't with us, so I don't know. But, yeah, if somebody could have been there and, you know, for on time. So think about that as, as we can serve other people. Um, and then... We have, um, oh, he was playing basketball, she said, and his heart skipped a beat, and he lost too much oxygen by the time the ambulance arrived. Um, so it see, can if happen was being within there. minutes. So this man, I knew. I knew. Mm. I just knew in my heart. I was like, you guys can save we have to life. get him out right now. Like, yeah. we can do that. And, I, and I'm just kind of that person like, no! This can't happen right now. Right. Like, no, this right. is not gonna happen Gotta on my watch. It. So, you know, we just do what we can. And um, somebody taught me, you know, I learned this stuff on the streets and cool, like, you know, where I was. Like I just I like to know that information. I want to know what I can do to help. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what One tests more. we can do. Is it genetic as well? That was yeah, these are, this is part of the okay. testing. Okay, cool. Okay, what tests do we do for our heart? Okay, you're going to hear about some of these tests. Uh, EKG, stress test, Holter monitor. These are different names. Okay. Chest x-ray, an echocardiogram, a CT scan, a cardiac cath. Okay, these are some things. Tell us if you've heard about these things. Yeah, thumbs up okay. if you've heard any of these. I'm going to explain give us them really up. fast. Okay, I was telling Mary's mom. She's like, well, she had a, t a chest, you know, rhythm test, and her heart's normal. Yeah. So she had an EKG. That means they put 12 leads on you, and they run it, and they see what your rhythm is. Okay? And they said everything was normal. ECG, EKG, okay. echocardiogram, it's the same vocabulary. It's like saying slip disc, herniated disc, protruding disc, okay? It's like Spanish, like... There's like three different words for everything, okay. you know? So <laughs> yeah. EKG, ECG, echocardiogram will tell you your rhythm. So the person that was talking about the regular heart rhythm, mm -hmm. that would be tech detected immediately on just placing the leads on and getting a heart rhythm. Okay. Okay, so we would know immediately. Stress test is a test that measures your ability for the heart to respond for the demand for blood. 
So I was telling Mary that I think that that's the next step for her mom is to get a stress test because it tells you how hard your heart is working during exercise. Kids, they'll usually put you on a treadmill. Okay. And they're going to give you some medication, and then they're going to monitor you, your heart the whole time during that activity. So you can see what your And they're going to see, like, how well your heart reacts during that test, okay? So they call it a stress test. It's kind of mean to call it that, I think. <laughs> Dina, it's stress you like, out. It stresses people out. I they, know a stress test heart. you can do. Lock all moms in the house with their children for COVID. There you go. Yeah. And then monitor their heart rate. And then monitor their heart rate. <laughs> Throughout the day. And their TikToks. Oh They've all gone gosh. insane. Yes. Okay, go Let's ahead. Stress <laughs> okay, so some people were saying, so some people might have like intermittent chest pain. Okay, okay, like from time to time, but their EKG is showing normal. Okay, okay, I go in for my 12 lead, it says normal. But no, man, like every once in a while, like I still get this weird, like, doo-loop, doo-loop, and I can feel it, you know? In your heart, okay. So some people get a Holter monitor where they'll wear for like one day or two and log in when they're doing exercise, mm-hmm. and the doctor can see when there's the arrhythmia and why. So, like, that lady that I was telling you was vacuuming, mm-hmm. and that was the only time I came on for her, it would pick that up, that arrhythmia. She might have had an irregular heart rate and heartbeat, and that caused her to have that weakening in the muscle and her to have her mini, mini, she had a mini heart attack. Okay. But still, she did have a heart attack, okay? So, Holzer monitor, my friend had to wear one once. She was having some issues with her heart. Okay. So they track it. They just watch you, and then they they see. They can detect if there's anything irregular okay. over a couple days span. Oh, that's okay. cool. Okay, not just oh, in that moment. Monitor. Yeah, not just in that moment. Okay. So some people that have those irregular heart rates, like you were saying, that he was playing basketball and he didn't have enough oxygen to his blood, he could have had you know normal EKG, normal heart rhythm, but he could have had an arrhythmia maybe when he was doing activities. Hmm. Okay. okay, so EKG stress test, culture monitor, x-ray doesn't really tell us much. It just shows us like the lungs and if the heart's enlarged or not. Okay. It's kind of like general. You're going to get an x-ray if you go to the hospital. That's just what they do, chest x-ray. Okay, so they'll see if there's any abnormalities in the heart or if there's an enlargement in the heart, like swelling. Okay, an echocardiogram is a, a it's an ultrasound and it shows like the pumping action. Okay. So it's a moving picture of the heart, and it just shows how well the chambers function, okay? So echocardiogram. That's also really good, echo. They'll be like, how's your echo? And they'll be like, it was 65%, you know? And that means, like, the ventricles were squeezing with 65% of force, okay? If it gets down to lower numbers, they start working, worrying about that pump, you know, and maybe giving you medications to help that pump. Okay, so an echocardiogram, we talk about it in percentages at work, like, what okay. was their echo? We call it echo. Okay. And you go like 65%. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. And like, what was their echo? It was like 15%. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Is not doing very good. You know what I mean? So echo is also a way to see how well the part is pumping the blood. Uh, cardiac CT scan is just a 3D image of the heart. And it's also looking for plaque in those coronary arteries. Um, the anatomy or congenital defects, okay, that we were talking about might not have been detected, might have been detected in a, in a cardiac CT scan. Okay. So um, my grandfather was very young when he died of a heart attack, my mom's dad, mm-hmm. but she was three. She didn't know him. But the more stories that I heard, I'm pretty sure he had a congenital heart defect. Mm-hmm. That he was in his 30s when he oh, died okay. from a major That's heart attack. Really At the young. hospital, in the elevator. Oh, wow. You know what yeah. I mean? So th- maybe a CT scan could have seen that that heart defect. If there was like a little hole and maybe the oxygen's getting leaked down to different places all that time for 30 years mm-hmm. that maybe he had when he was born could have been fixed a lot sooner by some of these like less invasive scans. Things. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So just thoughts. Like you can do okay. a cardiac CT scan. You can get a chest x-ray. You can get an echocardiogram to see the pumping action of the heart. You can get a stress test to see how it works when you're moving your body, okay? So these are all tests for your heart. And they're not scary, except for the stress test sounds scary, but it's not really scary, okay? This is on like a treadmill, right? So the last big one is the cardiac cath. That's what we call it, cardiac cath. Okay, catheterization, which 
that's what's, what's going to happen to that guy. When he got to the hospital, they go through a main uh, artery, usually in the wrist or in the groin. Okay. And they go up and they look into your heart. Oh, wow. It's so cool. It's, that's cool. It's both diagnostic <laughs> and they do treatment at the same time. So they inject this dye. And the dye will show where the narrowing is in the tube. So if they're like, you know, like this, it'll show where the narrowing is. And sometimes they can pop in a balloon to open that. Mm -hmm. And that's called an angioplasty. Okay. So angio in the heart, and then they open it up. Okay. So these yeah, words, like an don't angiogram. Get yeah. So that's the cardiac cath is the angiogram. And mm -hmm. then they're going to do angioplasty where they pop open a balloon inside. Okay. Or they'll do maybe a stent. Yeah, I was going to say that. You might hear that. So you might have a balloon, which is the angioplasty, or a stent, which is a wire mesh. Mm -hmm. That the it's kind of like a little, you know, like dentist, like. And then, boop. But when it's too severe or there's too much blockage, so like for my father-in-law, um, about ooh, I don't know, it was 12 years ago, he had a um, massive heart attack, and the guy actually told him, "You shouldn't be here. I didn't do anything special, but you're." You're here for a big reason. <laughs> and he had a quadruple bypass. Wow. Because they couldn't put a stent in. There was too much It means they had to bypass three or four of those parts that they couldn't open using these other methods. So a four-time bypass. They had to bypass four. Four. Four different layers of injury. Yeah. So he had, yeah, that was pretty major and he lived for another 12 years. Yay. So he died from, um, not from a heart attack. It was the prostate cancer that is very slow growing, but um, ended up taking him. But they kept thinking that he would have another heart attack. But that heart was nice and strong yeah, after exactly. that quadruple bypass. So, <laughs> so just like my patient who, you know, was stressed out, the doctor told her, we're going to go in and one of two things can happen. One, there's nothing. There's no blockage. You have a beautiful mm -hmm. heart and you just need to work on your stress management and how you take care of yourself. And really two, important. oh my God, we're going to see some crazy stuff and I'm going to have to do some intervention sign here saying that I can do it if I'm in there. She got out, nothing. It was like, oh, you know, like, yay, I'm so happy for you. She got to go home. You know, like, okay, you're good to go. Now, use your heart medication to keep your blood pressure in check. We're going to check on your heart. We're going to have regular appointments and we're going to watch out for your heart from now on. Just yeah. like, you know, your father-in-law, we watched out for his yeah. heart. For all those years, and he didn't have an issue with his heart after that. My mom's boyfriend, he's so cute, his name's Charlie. He's a cute little white guy. He's a mail carrier all his life. You know, so walked 9, 10 miles a day. Sure. Um, you know, skinny, healthy. He has like five, I don't even know, maybe six cents. We're only worried about Charlie's heart because uh, it's just genetic. Okay, his is some genetic. People, it's his, genetic. His family had heart disease, so those vessels are just weak in his heart. Mm. Okay, so don't think it's because of like diet or this person. Oh, they're gonna have a heart attack, or they're gonna have because you can be skinny and have like a really really bad gunky. You know, all these tests are gonna be like mm, you got to change your lifestyle. And we're gonna talk mm. about that next time. Is like yeah. all the healthy things that we can do to get our heart strong. Um, yes. Yeah, next week. So make sure you mark your calendar at 4 o'clock. I know we we're a couple minutes late this time, but we'll be live at 4 again. But do you guys have questions? I know I see here. Steph, you explained. Let's see. Hold on. Let me try to answer some questions Because it's hard here. to get to know everything, but just to know, like, there are tests. Some of them are, you know, more advanced in the process than others, but we can always advocate for when you're at the hospital emergency room, can we get a x-ray? Can we get, you know, and then you can see them over time, the changes. So don't think that once you had one EKG, it's always going to be the same. One MRI is not the same one day to the next. Sometimes we give our patients multiple MRIs on the same day. Okay. okay. So don't always think like, oh, I had one of those. It was fine. Like it changes. Okay. Advocate for yourself, like, and your family. Can we get an x-ray? Can we get a CT scan since we're already here? I call it the Might car wash. Well. Like, don't just, you're not there for the $5 car wash. Like, get the deluxe. If you're there and you're getting checked out or you're going to your doctor about something, like, I want Mary's mom to get the deluxe. Like, let's do an EKG. Let's do, you know, a stress test. 
You know, mom. let's do an echo. You know, let's check out she all She was the just lightheaded. So she, she didn't, she just got lightheaded and saw like lines. And so that's what really was kind Could of Could have been scary. just low yeah. blood pressure. But like yeah. you said, it's all part of Part the of it, yeah. Pump. So Evie says here, I was telling my endocrinologist that my heart flutters during workouts and she lowered my syn synthroid, meds. synthroid meds, which causes heart flutters if it's too high. It was super light. I was super lightheaded and fluttery. Yeah. So those things are also quite connected. If you're already taking a medication for something and it could cause side effects. Okay, so we got to be very cautious of that too. And you might want to ask me some other questions, V, uh, individually. And we could talk. Yeah, I also Evie. have an endo, Evie. I have also have an endocrinologist as well. So, and the endocrine has to do with the whole lymphatic system, which is also connected to this whole beautiful body that we, mm, we take care of. So, yeah. medications can also interfere and make you feel symptoms. So, Evie, I tagged Stephanie on Facebook here. I tagged her name so you can find her, Stephanie Yay. Olivas, and you can send her a message so she can answer those questions. And do you guys have any other questions tonight? I know we went we went for a while. How long have we been on? Oh, my gosh, like 40 minutes. But All we need to amazing. know is what do you do if you feel lightheaded, too? Sit down. Yeah. Yes. If you're feeling lightheaded, sit down. Stop if we, what you're if doing. we freeze because we see an emergency, we don't know what to do, what do we do? Call 911. Just call 911. Okay. And then we'll show you again how to do CPR on the because dog. Because <laughs> every single person that was there saved that man's life. Yeah. You know, and it was a blessing because he was very young. He looked like he was maybe in his 40s or 50s. So he was somebody's probably son, father, husband. You know, it was kind of weird. There was a lot of police and firemen. They didn't even ask me my name. And I was happy to be ninja stuff and just crouched next yeah. to the car just to watch and make sure nothing happened to him. <laughs> and that he was okay because I was not going to let him go. So, so not cool. after having all of you guys here with us. And um, so I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be part of this team. Yay, I feel I blessed. It. Thank and you. We're so blessed by you. And thank you for all this knowledge. I know everybody was saying thank you and you were explaining it so well. And yeah, she's so. definitely talented so. and gifted. I'm trying. And then we're going to talk next week about like the heart rate and like how to like do all these things to make our hearts stronger and healthier and like good foods yeah. and like all that good so, stuff. Next week will be more heart healthy. So save the date in your calendar and put notifications on. So when I go live, you already get notified and you're not late and you get to hear everything. But know that this is all saved on our page as well. So you can always go back and watch it and take more notes if you need. And if you need to borrow um, our <laughs> special dog, you can at any time. Yay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And take care. And remember, stronger together, mine body and soul and i'm um, just on the note of the soul come join my platform Yay, seven day free trial use the code mff love and love your body and take care of yourself i've got all kinds of workouts not everything is crazy high intense i have low impact high impact stuff to work your core and just to move your body and um so we're excited thanks so much you guys for being with us Yay. and we will see you soon love such you. vital information Yay! i know we all learned so much tonight God bless you guys. Take love care. You. Thank you, Ninja Stuff. Bye. We love it. <laughs> and the MF dog. <laughs> Bye.